From your home to City Hall, from your neighborhood to the White House, from your city to the world and beyond. This is Alpha City News with Craig Allen. Normally peaceful Kirby Park was disturbed today when the Conundrum Corporation's meta-transport fell out of a hole in the sky and landed on the shore of Center Lake. As onlookers watched, the still-open hole in the air disgorged a number of luminous butterfly people. The mystery gang quickly exited their transport, and while Lance Logan, Chet Maddox, and the lovely Evangeline Decane kept civilians at a safe distance, J.T. Chance and Iron Irv Fishbine took to the air in their rocket packs, herding the creatures back through the hole, which they then sealed with projectors firing violet beams. When questioned by intrepid reporter Lindy Johnston, Chet Maddox, the world's leading expert on quantum meta-theory, said that he and engineering genius Iron Irv Fishbein had created the meta-transport to allow the query crew to explore para-realities that exist near our own, and that the question quintet had been returning from the transport's maiden voyage when a para-reality tempest caused them to land in the park rather than on the launch pad at Conundrum Tower. In short order, Master Pilot J.T. Chance had the transport hooked up to the Corporation's Sky Chopper, and the adventurous fivesome headed out, restoring quiet to Kirby Park once more. The heroin Radiant, recently returned to Alpha City after a lengthy absence to points unknown, has been very busy this past week. She's been reporting action from Northside to Bakersley, stopping a car accident here and a mugging there, sparring with villain Magna Tomic, and even stopping an attack on Deputy Mayor Tom Jenkins. While all this do-gooding action has quelled most doubts about whether Radiant might actually be a shape-shifting Gatan spy, all is not perfect for the busy heroine, as a new arch-enemy seems to have set their sights on her. The attack on the deputy mayor was carried out by a new villainess who has been nicknamed Black Maria by the press, after her dark, featureless shape, described by one observer as looking like a moving, solid shadow. Black Maria's attack on Mr. Jenkins indeed seemed less about harming the man himself than about drawing Radiant into battle, where the two seemed almost evenly matched. Some reports indicate that Black Maria has been moving stealthily about the city, seemingly following random citizens, as well as observing the battle between Radiant and Magnetomic. Here's hoping the Radiant Lady is up to the challenge of her new opponent. Dr. Metrono made another daring bank robbery attempt yesterday. He and his gang, the TikTok men, were confronted by Jackie Quick just outside the Chamber's National location at Baxter and Carbondale Streets as they made their exit from the building. Dr. Metronome once again attempted to use his clockwork ray on Miss Quick, but she was too fast this time, using a special mirror we later learned had been provided by the Bright Man to reflect the beam, scattering the effect over a good number of the TikTok men. The affected gang members lost consciousness due to being caught between clockwork and human forms, and the remaining criminals were no match for the mistress of speed. The bad doctor himself eluded capture again, however, but only escaped with a fraction of the bank's money, and with his minions in custody. Chalk up a partial win for Jackie Quick. Pitched battle at Moonbase Selene. The tracker from Titan reappeared in Alpha City last week, warning of an imminent invasion by Titan's methane men, followers of the Nitrogeni, deposed ruler of Titan, and it appears his warning came just in time. An impromptu team, composed of Captain Stupendous, Empyrean, Cosmonaut, Lady Lunar, Miss Meteor, the High Frontiersman, Space Cowboy, and the Tracker himself met the lead wave of the invasion on the moon's surface, near to the international moon base Selene, which the Methane Men apparently hoped to use as a beachhead in their larger invasion. The battle was intense but brief, with very little damage done to the base itself, although two astronauts, Mayra Ramirez and Evgeny Polyakov, suffered a short period of oxygen deprivation. Both are reported in good condition as of this report. Having stopped the first wave, the collected superhumans have headed out to corral the remainder of the invasion force, and hopefully place them in the custody of Methania, 
the Queen of Titan. We here at ACN wish them good luck and will bring reports as they come in. Presto the Witch had a busy morning today as the wrecking ball destroying a building on Markov Street unearthed a doorway to another world, unleashing a small horde of trolls. The trolls, described as tall, shaggy, and strong, with fangs and a horrible stench, ran amok over the worksite, smashing everything they could with fists and clubs. Presto was on the scene in a flash, though, freezing some, causing others to mistake their own kind for enemies and attack them, forcing them, one by one, back through the doorway. The last one still free was picked up bodily by the Maid of Magic and tossed back into its own world. In short order, the damage caused by the trolls led to the collapse of what remained of the building, apparently destroying the door forever, as it had been painted on the wood of a wall with mystic sigils, which were erased by the collapse. All in all, the site foreman said, there had actually been very little damage to people and machinery, and the collapse of the building put his crew ahead of schedule. The collected workers offered to buy Presto lunch as thanks, which the lady was unfortunately forced to decline, saying she was needed elsewhere. Alpha City News is happy to announce that Heredry Industries has become our latest sponsor. Heredry Industries, for everything you need. Was your car destroyed by super combat? Heredry Insurance is there. Was a structure knocked down? From a single family home to full municipal reconstruction, Heredry Construction can fix it. Is the tree in your front yard dying, or your house covered in quick-growing poisonous vines? Heredry Arboreal is there. Are you sick? Heredry Medical. Are you tired? Heredry Sleep Solutions. Thirsty? Heredry Beverage. Whatever you need, there is Heredry Industries. Heredry. We do stuff. Heredry Industries no longer wholly owned by the Magnetic Emperor. In Midtown today, heavyweight collared the Jackalope, following a spree of cab robberies by the low-level villain. While heavyweight and the arresting officers waited for the special containment squad to arrive and take charge of the Jackalope, intrepid reporter Lindy Johnston managed to quiz the overweight hero about his reaction to an op-ed piece that appeared in Sunday's Alpha City Beacon. The piece, written by Amanda Diller, head of the organization Keep Our Children Healthy, or COTCH, singled out Heavyweight as a bad influence on children for his rotund shape. Heavyweight, who at 5 foot 7 inches, 260 pounds, and an estimated body mass index of between 37 and 40 percent, responded testily, and is quoted as saying, Look, I'd love to look like Captain Stupendous, all washboard abs and 3 percent body fat, but the fact is, my powers keep me from losing weight. I can throw a tank into orbit, which is great for the Army's orbital tank defense program, but it also means getting my body into an aerobic state is darn near impossible. Is it really not enough that I'm out here patrolling the streets every day just because I don't look like a male model? To editorialize for just a moment, I couldn't agree more. It's not the shape of the outside that makes a hero, but the heart inside. And I think Mrs. Diller misses the point when she focuses on the external for her judgment. Heavyweight and other heroes of the same type, such as Large Marge and Adipose Man, serve the common good selflessly and should be judged by that yardstick and none other. Gorilloid, the ape with the brain of a robot, led his gorillant minions on an assault on the high-energy physics department of Eisner University Friday morning, apparently trying to secure the experimental element Amazium that is housed there. According to witnesses, the gorilloid repeatedly bellowed that the Amazium was needed to power his de-evolutionary ray, and none would stop him from having it. Unfortunately for the primate machine symbiont, the noble gas bots were assisting with the university's Amazium experiments, and Argon, Krypton, Radon, and Lady Neon rallied behind Xenon, the leader of the gas bots, to stop the gorilla onslaught. Their noble gas based abilities carried the day, neutralizing the gorillant colony and capturing the gorilloid as well. 
no primates, human or otherwise, were seriously injured in the altercation. Viper Man was honored by the Loyal Order of Griffins Wednesday night for his heroic activities. The event was attended not just by members of the Griffins from four different states, but by the mayor, police chief Masters, and Commissioner Gutfeld, and most of the members of the Viper family, including Snakebite, Viper Lady and Viper Girl, Fire Viper, Lil Viper the Imp, Soothsayer, Dark Snake, Rat Woman, Snake Dancer, three alien superheroes inspired by Viper Man, the Viper Man of 2113, Snake the Viper Hound, and Blue the Viper Dolphin. Viper Man described himself as very honored. Blueberry Field in Kirby Park played host to The Vagrant over Tuesday night. The Vagrant, a 21-foot-tall, green-skinned, four-armed alien who dresses like a 1930s hobo, has appeared somewhere on Earth approximately every 18 months for the last 20 years, last time being seen in a Barcelona medical waste dump, where it was apparently rooting around for ingredients to its recipe for hobo chili. Police were called when passersby reported a seismic dissonant snoring coming from the park late Tuesday evening. The Hero Union was informed, and Gargantua was dispatched to the park, where she managed to cajole the vagrant into sleeping in an abandoned factory yard across the Yancey River and away from any homes. She also extracted a promise from the vagrant that it would move on come daylight. The vagrant proved as good as its word and was spotted leaving the atmosphere around 10 a.m. Wednesday morning. Fight promoter Don Prince announced May 10th as the date for the pay-per-view event, The Battle for the Name. The fighters, Alpha City Hero Troll and Los Angeles Hero Troll, will be duking it out to settle once and for all who is the rightful owner of the troll name. This particular fight has been brewing for almost five years since the simultaneous first appearance of both heroes. The actual fight will be held in the Devil's Knee Box Canyon, a safe distance from the nearest town. The canyon walls are being riddled with holes into which heavy-duty cameras will be installed, allowing viewing of the fight to continue even if, well, when, some are destroyed. More information will be given at a press conference next week, at which time both trolls will give the name they will use should the other troll win. Call your local cable provider for information on ordering this singular extravaganza. The Rainbow Corps had a bit of a clash today, though not of the usual sort. Civilians observing the Corps take down the Maximalists say that Green Machine and Violet Ultra executed a maneuver known as a Fastball Special, where Green Machine picked up Violet Ultra and threw her at a key component of the Maximalist's power source, allowing her to disrupt it. Once the Maximalist had been stopped, however, it became obvious that Violet Ultra was less than happy with Green Machine as the machine had not given her any sort of warning that she was about to be used as a projectile. The incipient argument was cut short by the arrival of the police, although Violet Ultra was heard to remark that she and the machine weren't through discussing the matter. Green Machine could be in for a rough night. And now, this week's combat scorecard. Clayton Astounding, the Edwardian Superman, Routed Team Shark, capturing Hammerhead, Tiger, and Dogfish. Great White and the rest of the team managed an escape, however. Madame Man crossed swords with Captain Spectre and his dog's body, capturing both. Lust for Justice took down the King of All Gone. The Quiet Man silenced Scream Queen. The Painted Lady, attempting to escape a police custody, found herself painted into a corner by the monochrome men, Svart and Vit. The bare naked lady found herself covered by the cloak of night as she tried to rob the Aquarius Ball on Wednesday. Visiting hero Glorioso teamed with Shadowstalker to thwart the Inquisitor. The owl and the crow fought tooth and nail across the rooftops of Floptown late Sunday night, although no end of the fight was observed. Big Weird Joe fought the lamppost to a tie. 
Actually, we're not sure if Joe fought the villain the lamppost or an actual lamppost. In any case, it was a tie. Mini Moose took down the tiny destroyer. Captain Thong bested the banana hammock. Groovetron and Funkbot silenced the Polka Twins. Hugo Reese rumbled with Tony Zucchini. The king of the Bafo Yak cleaned up Saddle Sore. Nightlight and Dusky tangled with Mondo Biondo. The Natural shocked Mr. Zap. The Altoona Kid suffered a humiliating loss to Negative Ray, who escaped with a priceless tapestry. The Red Bank Wild Man beat up several muggers. And finally, Jimson Weed was brought down to earth hard by Straight Lace. This has been Alpha City News with Craig Allen. Produced by Carter Lee. Newsbeds provided by Newsbeds.com. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions, please email them to us at alphacitynews at gmail.com. You can find us on iTunes or at SoundCloud under Alpha City News or at alphacitynews.wordpress.com or alphacitynews.libsyn.com. Thank you for listening and have a super day.